she she took me out on a date. Oh, I love that. And she just made me feel. Let's let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> What up, people? My name is Fireboy DML, and you're watching Billboard News. Hey, what's up? It's Tetris with Billboard News, and I'm excited today because I'm hanging out with Fireboy. How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm blessed. How you doing, man? Last time I saw you, you were kicking it at the Grammys, yes, man, sir. living your best life. How was the whole experience for you? It was amazing. It was um, a brand new experience for me. You know, it was glamorous seeing all those people, all those talents, you know, people that I look up to. I saw Lenny Kravitz, I saw Jay Z. Uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience for me. That's super cool. And how was it to see Afrobeats being celebrated? Because obviously there was the best African performance category that was a new category. So to see that happening, to see Burner Boy on stage, how was that process? Ah, oh, trust me, man, it was everything. It, it was like a manifestation of everything that we've been working for over the years and I was just really honored to witness it you know it was like oh this is this is where this is like this is it you know I'm just I'm just really happy for Afrobeats and the genre and African music in general because I mean it's bigger than Afrobeats now and I mean you're right in the center of it you're kind of like one of the big figureheads I feel like in Afrobeats and you got some new music oh, yeah. outside and over Sima. so why did you decide to put these two out as a two-pack first off because it's something I haven't done before I honestly was on a whim you know, I was like, it's been quite a year and I was like, you know, let me just do something really crazy. So tell me like, which song came first? Like, what was your creative process like? I had recorded Outside. Catch me outside tonight, out here with all my guys. Way before, like I think like October, November. I recorded Obasima in December. But I recorded Obasima and for the next couple of weeks, I couldn't make any other thing. I couldn't record anything else. I was just listening to the song back to back and it made me so happy. And proud to that, I was having a gloomy couple of weeks, so it was a, a refreshing feeling for me, and I was just happy. I was like, you know what? My Nigerians deserve to feel the same happiness, you know? And I like that your music <laughs> makes you happy. I think that's a good sign that, you know, you enjoy your stuff, so obviously your fans would as well. And then you did two music videos as well, so how involved are you with the creative process and what inspired the music videos? Well, I would say Afrobeats. We love to show, we love to celebrate. So if you're making music that you know talks about celebration, it's only right that you show it too, not just making people listen. And that's why it's imperative for me as an artist to always or mostly shoot videos for my songs. You know, because we always like to show off the beauty of our culture, our women, uh, our heart, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, Obasima is actually Twi, that's Ghanaian language. It means the woman of substance or the perfect lady. So I went to Ghana, Picked the most beautiful Ghanaian women I could find and I shot the video. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. an amazing job to have. And you got to work with Black Bones on Outside. Yeah, that's So my tell me about that relationship and how you guys came together. I was like, you know what? I need to feature someone, a rapper who is not a conventional rapper, someone crazy enough to jump on a record that nobody would expect them to. And Black Bones was the only right answer. And we go way back. We went to the same uni. Oh, really? And we've been guys, yeah. So like, the connection was seamless. I didn't really even have to be in the studio with him when he recorded his verse. And I knew he was gonna do something special. Wow, that's really dope. And like, and do you feel like you collaborated with him on the verses? Is it, are you one of the guys in the studio like, this is my song, this is what I want you to oh, do? Oh, definitely. When he, when he sent the first cut, I was like, okay, you know what, change this, change this, change this. <laughs> so that, yeah, but it was just one correction and yeah, I got it right. Stay flight in my time complete, then my time is a brand new piece. I'm balling, I'm balling. You're no stranger to collaborations. Yeah. You've done um, a lot of huge ones throughout your career. So so I want to kind of talk through a little bit of those. So you work with John Batiste and John Bellion as well. So talk about that process and what it was like to That one somewhere. was huge because John Bellion is someone that I've always looked up to. Like when people ask me, who do you look up to? I tell them the foundation of my sound is Juan de Cole, John Bellion and Passenger. One thing that strikes me about John Bellion and Passenger is the honesty in their lyrics. They're so unbelievably unfiltered honesty. Like they bear it all. It made me realize that that was one thing that was lacking in the music space at the time, in the Nigerian Afrobeats music space at the time. And I figured that was my way 
of bringing something new to the table. John Bellion is someone I've always looked up to, I always loved, loved his artistry. He's one of those artists who don't really care about the glitz and glamour of it so all, chill. you know. So that alone inspires me. So being on a song with him and John Baptiste was, was huge. So take a deep breath, drink water. You know that these streets just are wrong. For that, I'm grateful to John Baptiste because it's, it was one of my dreams as an artist to work with an artist like that. Me and my guitar with Jax Jones. Yeah. So tell me about that collaboration. It's still me and my guitar. I'm still singing for my art. As he said that, it sent chills down my spine because when we were shooting the video, it was so cold. Oh, really? And <laughs> it, was, it took you back all the way to the It took me cold. back all the way back to the cold. Where were you guys cold. shooting it? Yeah, we were in London shooting the video. It was, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Amazing person. The thing is, I'm really grateful for the collaborations I've done in my life because all the people I've collaborated with have turned out to be amazing people, apart from being amazing artists. And they all inspired me in their own different ways. And Jack Jones is one of those people, really genuine, down to earth doesn't really care about the things that don't really matter. It just really cares about the art and that is inspiring. That was a fun collaboration, a beautiful song. You know, there was a story behind the song which made me really love the song. Talking about coming from a very small, sleepy town in Abelkuta, the States, you know, um, writing poems and just trying to figure out life up until when I went to uni and I discovered music and my life just changed. You have such an incredible career so far. Now I gotta tell you, I'm being honest here, the first time I heard you was on one of my favorite artists of all time, Madonna. Really? Yeah, dude, the Frozen remix? Wow. Dude, I was losing it, dude. You delay me playing, wasting time, time, don't make me wait in line. I'm such a massive Madonna fan, so When we... she texted me, I was like, Whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 did you wait, say wait. when she texted me? Yeah, she me? sent me a DM on Instagram. She just told me, I think she told me she was a fan or something, and wow. she loved the most unlikely song on the album, oh, on my wow. debut album. She's so weird and <laughs> funny. I just love her. And yeah, that was, that was, that is one of the highlights of my career. So definitely, you know, having a song with Madonna is, is really something to be proud of because that's the queen of pop. You know? Extremely. And tell, you have to tell, what was one of the funniest stories from like working with her? Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say everything, but I went out on a date with Madonna and I would say it's probably the most memorable date I've been on. Wow, I'm, I mean, that. you can't top going on a experience. date with Madonna. That's amazing. Yeah. And like I said, you have just such a great career because now I go from talking about Madonna to talking about Peru. I mean, working with Ed Sheeran, that song was huge. So talk to me about like, how did that come together? I told myself, I'm like, God, I want a global eat. You know, that was when Essence was really popping. I was like, I want a global eat. I would love to also contribute to my genre, you know, by having a, a, a song that cuts across the whole world and just changes my life forever. And God gave me Peru. So the song blew up, amazing record. You know when the song blows up and it becomes this annoying song that you just hear everywhere? Yeah. It became that <laughs> in Africa, you know, in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, I was like, ah. Oh, Everywhere you went. So it needed something, it needed something really special. And it came in form of that collaboration with Ed Sheeran. I was in the studio that day, I remember, and I got a call from Mr. Karim, who um, works with uh, my label Empire, and he told me, yo, guess what? Ed Sheeran is gonna be on your record, man. It, it, check your DMs, I think I sent you a DM now. He's recorded the verse, everything is ready. I'm like, wait, 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 what? You know, but apparently, um, Jamal Edwards, God rest his soul, a close friend of Ed Sheeran and, you know, a very big part of the culture in the UK, sent the song to Ed Sheeran and told him about it. Like, yo, I have this amazing song by my brother. I think you should get on it, it's amazing. And they're really close, so he could never say no to, 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 to Jamal. And he also really loved the song. And he recorded his verse. He just sent me a DM, he sent a voice note, to send a DM. Wow. to me and when after i got the call i checked my instagram i was like he really sent the dm and i listened to it and i was like what this verse is fire i'm like this is no crazy notes. no notes <laughs> no single note <laughs> he's an amazing person a genuine person success has different effects on people you know success to ed is different personal you know he's so down to earth and it's, it's almost like nothing really faces him. You know, no matter how many stadiums he sells out, no matter how many records he sells, he's still that same person. And that was the very first thing I learned 
from him and I was like, you know what, this is a really good thing to apply to your life. That song ended up obviously bringing you to the Billboard Hot 100 for the first time. So do you feel like for you that was also a pivotal like point in your career where things started to change? Yeah, definitely. And But most importantly, it was huge for the culture, you know, for African music, for my country, for my people. It, it was one of the, I could probably say it's one of the songs that really put Afrobeats on the map, put Afrobeats out there. And I'm just honored <laughs> to be a vessel. Man, that's an amazing thing to have done for your country, I'm sure, and for the movement. So let's kind of go backwards and talk to, uh, talk about, you know, Fireboy from the beginning, a young kid in Nigeria. Tell me when you kind of knew music was going to be your thing. What if I say, make me not be friends, make you be my best. I've always known I could sing. I mean, I had a short stint in the choir. My mom forced me to sing in the choir because she <laughs> thought it was cool. <laughs> uh, bless her. And I remember my first introduction to art was through writing, poetry. I've always been that loner, nerd, with my glasses, just writing poems. There was this platform back in the day called Poet Freak, where you could just upload your poems and people could comment and you know, we could relate. I became quite a celebrity on there. Oh. And I was like 11, 12 years old. It, was, it felt good. <laughs> you know, it helped me with my self-esteem. It helped me with my confidence. And it made me realize that, okay, I had something going, but I still felt empty. I felt lost. I felt confused because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. When my dad asked me what I wanted to study in uni, I was like, well, I'm good with words, so maybe law. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, because it's cool. And then I ended up studying English, which turned out to really do me a lot of good. So I went to uni lost and confused. Most of my peers who went to uni knowing what they wanted to do with their lives, I did not know what I wanted to do with my life at the time. And then it took that independence and that solitude because I was alone, just me, four hours away from home, no dad, no mom, no siblings, just me living life for myself. I had to figure something out. So my first year in school, I focused in school. I was I had first class, good grades, Serious student, I continued my nerdy lifestyle, but I was hanging out with the cool kids in school. And the cool kids in school were the dancers, the musicians. So I always followed them to the studio. You know, sometimes rap. Oh, I used to be a rapper. Oh, Dark man. Dark times, man. <laughs> Dark times. Dark times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then before I knew it, I made my first song. You know, just jokes. It was just bands, just wow. jokes. And then I remember going back to my dorm room that, that, that night, listening to the song. I'm like, I really made this. Wow. And that was it. I was like, yo, this is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Wow. No, 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 this is it. Like, I was so sure. It's that conviction that I felt in my bed that night that carried me all the way through to this very moment. I left school, went to Lagos, and that was where the real journey began because it was a whole different ball game from being that young boy in school, making music and chilling and everything to facing real life in Lagos. That was another face entirely. And I went through a whole lot of crazy stuff, learning process. I learned to be self-sustainable as an artist and make sure that I worked on finding my sound as opposed to looking for people to help me and begging for shows and all that. And glad, I'm glad it all worked out. Olamide discovered me, discovered that I was almost the finished complete package and helped me to become the star that I am today. I know I'm sure a lot of like the poetry writing that you were doing since you were a kid turned easily into songwriting. Exactly. You know, it helped me to infuse poetry into my writing. You know, when I realized I needed to be more honest, I needed to emphasize on the lyrics, on the writing, on songwriting when it comes to Afrobeats, I realized that Afrobeats was lacking a lot in not lyricism because we've always had really good writers, you know, but there was something lacking. There was some honesty and depth that was lacking at the time. And I figured I needed to take advantage of it. And it was, you know, my journey through poetry that helped me navigate those waters. And then once, you know, through discovering music in uni, actually becoming discovered and a part of the music industry, what's something that like shocked you at first when you were like, wait, I didn't know if I signed up for this. This is a little bit more difficult, maybe. I went through a lot of crazy stuff, you know, like every upcoming artist, you always go through a lot of stuff. There was a show I attended. I, I went to perform and nobody even knew I was on stage. There was no stage. Nobody even spared me a second glance. Nobody was even, everybody was just dancing. It was like the DJ was just mixing, transitioning songs into songs. I felt invisible. And I went back to the car that night with my friend, crying. <laughs> and I told myself, never again. I would never ask for something 
until I feel like I deserve it. So I went back to the studio, made sure that I had enough songs, made sure that I could, I was proficient enough to enter any studio in the world and make any song. And I rejected a couple of deals. I rejected, a, I won't mention names, a couple of really big artists came to me. I was like, I'd love to sign you. I'm like, nah. I don't want this. But when Olamide came, I knew that, yeah, this is the right decision. And that process really helped me in making a couple of decisions that really helped me, you know, um, going forward. What do you do in your free time that, like, really brings you, like, center? I've always loved solitude, you know. And when, when, when I became famous, solitude became sort of a luxury. So it made me now even understand the importance of really being in your zone. I also love football a lot. What? Americans call soccer, oh. by the way. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, I, I watched Ted Lasso and it got me used to saying football yeah, now. So. <laughs> yeah, I love football. I play football. In fact, if if it wasn't for music, probably might have pursued something. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I was varsity in high school. What position were you? I played eight just behind the striker. I play football. I talk football. I watch football. I breathe, live football. So every Sunday, I go with my guys to the pitch, play football, sweat it out. I'm not a really? fan of going to the gym. so. That's how I stay fit. Well, I mean, we were talking earlier about Afrobeats and kind of like what it, the genre has become. It's like of the world, it's bigger now. And I feel like you also incorporate a lot of genres into your music. So how is it to kind of like be under the Afrobeats umbrella, but also pull from all these different genres? The truth is that it's not a new thing. That's how it's always been. And I will start from the very genesis. At the core of it, Nigerians have a skill. It's almost like we are born with it it's adaptability. No matter what you throw at us, we will adapt. No matter where we find ourselves, we will take whatever we can find and adapt. Fela, the godfather of Afrobeat, took his own essence, his own culture, and mixed it with jazz, and made what we know as Afrobeat at the time, and he passed it down. This is, apart from the Fuji, Juju, which is our own stuff, like, that's our own stuff, but like I'm talking Afrobeat, you know. So that's the same thing that we do. We take our own culture and mix it with pop. We have people like Ruga mixing it with dancehall. We have people like CK mixing it with R&B. We have Rema doing literally Afro pop. We have Bruna who calls music Afro fusion. It's been too so talented, he can literally do anything. That's how it's always been. So me, I, I'm like that too. I have R&B records, I have pop records, I have dancehall, I have reggae. I feel like I've done almost everything. Well, that's what I was gonna yeah. ask you. Is there a genre that you feel like you haven't touched on that you Probably like, have jazz. thought about? Maybe I was too young to really tap into it, you know, but it's, it's interesting. But right now I'm looking at doing Afrobeat and country. I'm, I'm country. curious to see. And okay. I've been dabbling a bit. When, when I come up with something, everybody will know. <laughs> oh my God, well yeah. now you have me thinking like, who would be a good country collaborator for Fireboy? Have you got anybody in mind? Um, there's this new artist that I've really got into, Noah Khan. I really love his music. I feel like that's, that's one artist I really, really, I've been really getting to his stuff lately. We mix everything together, but from my own point of view, I would say I make pop, I make R&B, but when I make these songs, I always make sure to put my own essence into it. You know, you can always tell that this person is not American, this person is not, this person is, it's gotta be from somewhere. Where is this person from? Why did he say this? What does this mean? You know, I use my Yoruba language. And in Yoruba, we are very dramatic. It's a very dramatic tribe. We have a lot of exclamations. Yay, ah, oh, ooh, you know, stuff <laughs> like that. When you think about how you can combine those things, it comes out really nice. And that's, that's one really exciting thing about Afrobeats right now. It's 2024. You just kicked off the year with a two pack of new music. What can we expect from you this year? I'm excited to share with the fans that I am releasing my album this year and I'm finishing up the album here in LA. You know, got an apartment with a pool and a beautiful view. Okay. You know, beautiful women in the pool. <laughs> you know, uh, I just want to be in an environment that reeks of happiness and peace of mind and comfort and peace and, and that's what I want the album to sound like you know and that's why it's taking this much time because trust, I know the fans are really like impatient and all that but it's going to be worth it the album is dropping this year I'm going to be touring a lot I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff that you know I never really I used to overthink a couple of years ago I'm going to be going into that I'm also going into 
the movie industry. You know? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be acting. All right, man. You know, Come um, out here and do it. My, my 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 people have always said I'm a dramatic young man. I mean, I know being dramatic does not equate to knowing how to act, but I do know how to act. And yeah, I mean, from my music videos, I've acted in a couple of music videos, and be like, you know what? I can't let this gift to waste, you know. So I'm curious, and I'm, you know, I'm curious to see where it leads me. Well, dude, we can't wait for the new music, the new album. Welcome to LA, and thanks Thank for you. dropping by Billboard, bro. Thank you, my bro. Of thanks course. for having me, man.